record on this computer. Yes. So today we're going to learn the superset um, of the shoulders and the latissimus dorsi. The, that's the name of one muscle. Or in short, people refer to it as lats. Okay. I'm sure you've seen this in any of the gyms as the lat pull down exercise. And people mix this up with the lat, the word lateral. Okay. Lateral means sides of your body. So when you take a step to the side, that's called a lateral step. Or Can when you, you tell us what where the lats are again? I'll show you. I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm just covering that lateral, the word lateral. So when we do the lateral raise, okay, that means I'm raising arms out to the side. Lateral means side. Okay, I'm just going to put it on the chat here. Lateral equal side. Okay. But latissimus, latissimus dorsi is the name of the muscle that opposes your deltoid. Now I'm going to show you. So I can also show you on the web or you can go online and chat on, on Google. I mean, um, type on Google saying, you know, uh, latissimus dorsi, you'll see where it is located. But mainly, deltoid is your shoulder, okay? And we'll cover how many parts of that muscle are. And the motion that the deltoid mainly does is pressing up above your head. It's called overhead press. Okay, so arms going or pressing up above your head. You can even try it now. Just turn your palms up toward the ceiling and push up. Then you'll see or you'll feel, you'll feel the deltoid is working or the shoulder muscle. What would be the opposing action of this movement? Pulling down. Exactly. Thank you, Tori. She just showed us. So if you are pushing up to work the deltoid, you are grabbing something. I'm going back. Okay, grabbing something up above your head and pulling it down. That's going to work the latissimus, which runs. It's a long and big muscle. It's a back muscle. Okay, it starts from here. It attaches to your scapula and goes all the way to the side and back and attaches to your pelvis. It's also called a swimmer's muscle, okay? Swimmer muscle in uh, layman's world. <laughs> swimmer muscle or lats or latissimus. That, that's why since people use the shortened version lats, I just put it on the chat, people mix this up with lateral. Okay, don't mix that up with lateral. It's the latissimus dorsi muscle that they, they're trying to refer to. So those are the two actions that we're going to cover today. And I'll show you the exercises that works the deltoids by pressing up above your head. And that works the lats by pulling down. The biggest challenge at home to work the lats is you have to find something up above your head or you have to shorten your height so that you can reach up and pull something down okay uh there are tools that they sell on the internet i actually bought one from amazon it's an anchor uh for five bucks it wasn't a big deal i'll show you uh, it's actually hanging here on my door so this is the anchor okay and this is the band that i use it's a loop and then i just put this through the anchor so i have two handles i can do a lat pull down i can put a bar in between these and do a lat pull down with a bar okay or i can shorten even even this height is not enough to do a lat pull down so what I do is I just get down on my knees or just have a, a one knee up and one knee down and then pull down. I can do it this way or do it this way 
to work my latissimus, okay? So that's the biggest challenge when it comes to working out at home. Other than that, we can use anything to lift up above our heads, okay? And let's talk about this first, um, deltoid. Deltoid, I'll just type it up again. It's also on your lecture notes, deltoid. Deltoid is your shoulder muscle, the big chunk. But it's weird that the shoulder muscle is broken down into three portions. And they each act like another muscle group because they do different motions, okay? The front portion, okay, is called a front deltoid, apparently. <laughs> And our anterior, actually, in, in anatomical lingo, it's called anterior, that means front deltoid. Okay, you can also say front deltoid. And interestingly enough, all the exercises that we learn to work, that work the chest will work your front deltoid as well. That was one of the uh, quiz questions and I was trying to tell you uh, on the workout on Wednesday, okay? So anything that you do, like pressing actions, push-ups, okay, or flies will work the front portion of your deltoid because it's so close to your chest and it does the same motion, okay? The second portion of your deltoid is the middle deltoid. It's the big chunk that you see as your shoulder muscle here, okay? And that is, mainly for lateral movements, which means side movement. When you lift your arms out to your sides, which is called a lateral raise or a pec deck, or that's not, a, I'm sorry, not, not a pec deck. Uh, lateral raise will work the middle portion of your deltoid, okay? And any overhead movements, okay, like the military press, pushing up, or Arnold press with a rotation. Anything that works up above your head or a shoulder press machine at the gym will work all three portions of your deltoid. And the last portion of your deltoid is the posterior deltoid. The back portion of your deltoid or posterior. So we covered anterior or front, middle, and posterior. And posterior deltoid is uh, like your upper back muscles. The rhomboids that we worked or the middle trapezius that we worked on Wednesday, whatever you do for working those muscles will also work your posterior deltoid, like any pull movements, pulling uh, to do a, a low row, pulling to do a high row, or a fly, reverse fly, bent over, reverse fly, okay, will work the posterior portion of your deltoid. Is this clear? Any question? So posterior deltoid is the, the side, or what was that one? The back, the back. The back, okay. You can also call it a back deltoid, or rare deltoid, that's what the layman, uh, terminology is rare deltoid okay is posterior front deltoid is anterior and middle deltoid is the middle and latissimus we're just going to look at it as one big chunk of muscle and we will be working those uh, mus that muscle all the fibers with pulling down uh, motion so let me share my screen with you uh, share screen. Okay, so um, muscles and exercises, the highlighted ones that, those are the ones that we're going to perform today and learn how to do. So push deltoid overall, any push up above the head, overhead press, military press, Arnold press, shoulder press, etc. Lateral raise, the mid portion. Front raise is another movement that you move your arms in up in front of you, 
that's called a front raise. It's going to work the front portion of the deltoid and bent over fly will work or any rowing motion will work the back portion of the deltoid. On the other side of the chart is the opposing muscle group, which is latissimus dorsi, and that does all the pulling, lats, lat pull down, that machine with the big bar. You sit in the gym and pull down here into your chest. In the, in the past, they used to do it to the back, and that is a contraindicated move, and that's out of our inventory okay repertoire so we don't do it to the back because it's not good for your neck health cable pull down anything with arms straight you don't have to bend the arms to work the, uh, the lats you can also do with straight arms straight push down or pull down that's going to work your lats swimming of course will work your lats straight arm pull or pull up okay chin up uh, cable pull in, all of the cable pulls will work your latissimus like this. If you are standing uh, in between two cable machines, I don't know if you can see me, and grab the handles and pull them in toward your legs, that's also going to work your latissimus. Just think about it as your armpits, okay? If you sit down at a lat pull down machine in the gym, and again, biceps are your accessory muscles in that exercise. Yes, they help, they assist the exercise, but they should not be the primary mover. The primary mover is latissimus in the lat pull down. So if you think about it, like we talked about, concentrate on your muscles when you're working them out. Concentrate on the muscle underneath your armpit right here, and imagine. You're just gonna squeeze a ball underneath your armpits. Then you're gonna be able to activate more of your lats than your biceps, okay? Just pinch something underneath your armpits. You can even try it now. You don't even have to have any weights. Just load it as you reach up and then activate your latissimus by just pulling your elbows down toward your uh, rib cage. That's what we do in the dynamic warm up in the beginning to work, warm up those latissimus dorsi muscles. Excuse me. Any questions from this? That's going to be our practice or activity today. So I'm just going to close this file. And then we're going to go ahead and cover the le lecture. So 12 common exercise mistakes, injuries, back health, and posture. These are pages from the latest edition, 42 to 47, okay? So we're gonna cover the overtraining. If we do too much, again, I, I checked your answers to the question. That was a, a little bit of a tricky question, but we also covered it yesterday as the overexertion. Um, you don't wanna do as hard as you can. You don't want to have any pain during your workouts. Um, and don't underestimate the strength of a workout. Once you design it, it is a good workout. And just stick with it instead of just straining your body. If you do, and if you do it uh, periodically or regularly, you tend to run into this problem called overtraining. Okay, doing too much and uh, too hard so the symptoms of overtraining you will end up feeling okay even when you wake up of a increased resting heart rate normally when you rest even if you have a fitness tracker you can see let's say your resting heart rate runs about 60s if you are overtrained it is going to be elevated okay even when you're resting you'll end up having injuries out of the blue. Like you're doing everything in the best proper form and shape possible, but you still have injuries, lower back hurts, ankle sprains or anything like that, okay? Again, your muscles cannot coordinate or control the movement. Weight loss, some unexpected weight loss, even though you're not trying. Mental dullness, you can't focus, you can't, 
uh, concentrate, disturbed digestion, either uh, diarrhea or constipation or appetite, early exhaustion during a workout, even though uh, you just started, for example, we're going through the warm up, and if you are overtrained, you are so drained, like wasted, even during the warm up and fatigue during the day. So those are the overtraining symptoms and we don't want to overtrain our body. Other exercise mistakes, we've been talking about this poor exercise technique. That's why you really have to concentrate on the muscle groups that you're trying to work to have the proper posture and you know, reduce the risk of uh, overload. Um, improper equipment, what are those equipment? Clothes and shoes are included in the equipment uh, category. Surface also. So those are, uh, if they're not picked the right or properly, those are um, the, the reasons that we might run into some injuries. Uh, we talked about the clothes, shoes. They should be supportive, uh, cushioned to take the impact of your workout if you're doing jumps and you know, high impact exercises, surface is also important. For example, let me give you the best practice from years experience. I've, I've been running and running for years. Uh, the best, where do you run, for example? When you go out to run in the neighborhood, where do you run? Do you run on the cur curbside? If you do, that is concrete surface. And that's going to put a lot of um, impact to your joints and it's not as good as the asphalt okay yes it's not as safe to run on the uh, road that the, the cars are driving because it's the asphalt and it's softer than the concrete but what I do is I go on the other side of the road where you know the left side of the road so I can see the cars coming towards me Okay, especially if I'm listening to music, I want to be safe from the cars, but I'm still on the asphalt right next to the curb side, and I don't jump on the curb uh, to, to run. I, I choose to run on the asphalt. Sometimes cars are looking at me like, what are you doing? But I don't care because that's much better for my knees, my ankles, my hips, my lower back, because all that impact coming from your ankle even might end up hurting your neck, for example, your shoulders. It's hard to believe, but everything is connected, it's called a kinetic chain in the body. So that's the surface. And of course, using old equipment, broken equipment, uh, a treadmill, for example, that doesn't have enough absorption on the, the, the running surface, those are the uh, potentials for injury. That makes sense because I've been running like three to four miles and then um, my my shins will hurt or like my knees and, and I'm like, I don't know. Where, I, I would, yeah, where do you run? I Maybe run yeah. like around my block, but I run on the on the sidewalk, like the concrete. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That. I just, I never knew that. So now I know. Yeah. And, don't be on the right side though, okay? Yeah. 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 And run up, you know, before the cars. You won't be able to see the cars coming right behind you. So yeah. don't, just switch to the left side. You'll be just mm -hmm. fine. I've been running like that for years. If I can't go on a, a running surface, if, you know, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so insufficient warm-up. Again, injury. We already covered that. And insufficient warm-up and wrong warm-up like doing static stretching during your warm up extra long workouts lead to overtraining we don't want that lifting weights that are too heavy well yes we are excited we want to lift as heavy as we can and we get too excited to a point of trying to lift something that is out of our league at that moment and that leads to improper technique and again potential for injuries for getting muscle groups, we talked about this. Try to include all the muscle groups in your workout. Uh, you will see a, a workout that I designed and put on uh, YouTube, which you will be performing, which uh, tends to all have all the muscle groups in one workout, which is 
about 30, 35 minutes long. Unrealistic goal setting, again, short term and long term. Let's say you just started running, you finished a mile today, maybe tomorrow a mile and a half, and next week you're expecting to do a five mile run, that's too much. Again, it's gonna end up giving you all the pain of overtraining. Forced breathing, we don't wanna hold the breath. Uh, yes, some power lifters do that, but we don't want that in our regular body sculpting workouts. So exhale as you exert, inhale as you reset. Two bouncy or fast exercises. Again, if you're not ready, this depends on the person, apparently. If you're not ready, we want to avoid those two bouncy or fast exercises, especially in the beginning of the workout and the war in the warm-up inadequate gradual cool down. This is important guys. There is a, an explanation for this. You don't have to know the physiology, but I'll explain it to you so it makes sense. Maybe it'll stick with you uh, for a long amount of time for the rest of your life, hopefully. What happens when you just stop abruptly is during the workout, your heart will pump the blood out to your extremities, your arms and legs, because those are the parts that you're working out, okay? You're running, you're doing your jumps and everything, so the oxygen is needed at your extremities, not the, the core. So your heart, that's why your heart rate goes up to pump enough oxygen to the extremities. If you stop abruptly, your heart cannot catch up with your speed of stopping abruptly and it still sends the blood out to your extremities. And since you're not moving anymore, you just stopped, the, the blood pulls down in your extremities, it stays there. When you keep moving though, that muscle contraction action pumps the bl blood back toward your core, your center where it's supposed to be. But if you stop abruptly, the blood stays in your legs, that's called blood pool, pooling, okay, or your arms. And for a short amount of time, since your brain cannot get enough oxygen, you might end up fainting. I've seen this happening in the gym so many times. They're trying to lift so heavy and they're straining, straining, and they jump out of the machine and they stop and then whew, there they go, pass out. So to avoid that, we want to gradually bring down the intensity of the workout, okay? Depending on what you do. Running, start r jogging after a sprint, run, jog, walk, and then stop. Or if we're lifting weight, keep moving so that the blood comes back to your brain and your heart, and then you can stop. That's what we're trying to do with the cool down. Stretching even is a good way of pumping the blood back to your heart. Insufficient stretching, yeah, I just said that. Let's say we just ran into a certain injury. Here I am, injury, in case of an injury. What do we do? RICE, okay, try to remember this acronym. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Why do we do all this, these, four of them? In the first aid, I'm, I bet you learned this in the elementary school. <clears throat> So let's say you sprained your ankle. You have to stay out of it. That's rest. So that you reduce the inflammation. All, this, all these efforts are to reduce the inflammation because when you get injured, that site of the body gets inflammated because inflammation means swelling, bruising, uh, and redness, okay? Why? Because the blood rushes to that site to heal the site. And all the white blood cells, red blood cells, just crowd the area, okay? That's when you see the redness and swelling and bruising. To reduce that, we have to rest it, we have to stay away off of it and ice it. Ice sends away that redness and inflammation, swelling, compression uh, does that too. You have to press on the site so that, again, the inflammation gets reduced and elevation. You have to lift, if you can, 
uh, if the injury, let's say, is at your ankle, you have to lift it up above your head and rest it that, not head, but your heart level and rest it that way, okay? What are common aerobic injuries are um, ankle sprain, knee injuries. I'm not going to go over them. You can read them. Uh, these are aerobic injuries. Since this is not an aerobic class, I still teach them, but these are the most common injuries. Shin splints, just like Viviana was saying. So you, these are the most uh, common ones. I would like to bring up the fact that we have to have proper posture every time, even sitting, even cooking, even studying and working out, of course. And this is our proper posture, like I showed you. Neutral is fine. You don't want to arch it too much, tuck under too much. Shoulders neutral, not rolled forward, not shrugged. Just relax, neck long. Try to keep a long neck. Move the ears away from your shoulders as much as you can. Ha head. This is again, take thing posture or take thing neck is what the, the physical therapists call. We want to avoid that by tucking our chin as much as we remember during the day. Tuck the chin in and reduce the sprain in your neck by hanging it down too much. Uh, and what's that symmetrical? Oh, pelvis symmetrical, squared, both sides equally distributed. Knees slightly bent, soft knees. We don't want to lock, it, lock them. Hip distance apart, feet parallel, and toes pointing forward. This is the ideal posture we want to keep. And make sure you remember this even when you're cleaning your apartment, even when you're cooking, even when you're sitting. These two, definitely quiz questions. Remember, the last two. Proper lifting. When you want to lift something or when you want to pick something from the floor how do you get down to the floor how do you lower your body or lower your hand to reach down to the floor okay let's say i'm going to reach for my hand weights here if i do it from my back that's going to strain my back so instead of doing it from the back i just do a simple squat Bend my knees, sit on my heels, not on my toes, of course, a proper squat, grab it, and then come up. And then when I'm about to put it back down, I do the same thing, okay? Bend your knees, not your back. And proper sleep position. Let's say you have a lower back pain. What do you do? How do you sleep? This is your sleep position on your side and I just ordered this pillow I'll show you it's awesome you don't have to have it but it's great knee pillow so I just put this between my knees when I'm lying on my side because I'm a side sleeper which is a good thing for your back and there's a strap so you can strap this around your uh, leg so it doesn't move away when you sleep Okay, so on your side, not your back, not your stomach. Apparently, stomach it hurts your lower back because it puts it into a, a, an unequal position, your pelvis. When you lay on your side and put a pillow between the knees, pelvis is neutral and equal, again, just like when you're standing, okay? That's about it. Any questions? Really? Hmm. Any comments? Just like Viviana made about running on the curb or the asphalt? Okay, so 1.55 now. Let's meet at 2 p.m. You can turn off your cameras now. I'll record the workout so you have a reference in the future too. Uh, let's meet at two. Bye.